Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us for this wonderful webinar that uh, Sarah Quigley, the co-founder of Private Trial Iceland, is going to show us today. And uh, thank you for joining us for all the, from all these parts of the Americas. Always great to see you all. Sarah, please, your turn. Thank you, Dominique. Thank you, everyone. Let me just get my... Yeah. So we had a lovely Quick swap of producer. screens. <laughs> Already, we, we saw the volcano, which is on, but Sarah will send you all... Uh, uh, the link, uh, I don't know if you already posted it, Q&A for the questions, and uh, and then we go from there. Have a, no good, have a good time together. <laughs> Thank you everyone for joining us. So this is just um, a presentation on the current eruption and a quick overview on, on Iceland. So at the moment there is an eruption happening um, in the Reykjanes Peninsula which is the area of the Blue Lagoon and the airport on, and the way into to Reykjavik. So that was the, I just um, had a live stream that uh, from a drone from the, the local news company in Iceland. Um, and that's going on for the next sort of 13, 14 hours. So I'll send everybody the link because it's, it's quite amazing to see. So we'll just go straight into a quick overview on Iceland and a few of the main sort of sites. Um, this picture here is from the um, Diamond Beach, which is located next to the, the Glacier Lagoon. And this is where all the icebergs from the glacier come off into the lagoon, wash out onto the um, ocean and then come back onto the black sand beach there. So that's located in the southwest of the country. We've got Langmanla, which are the highlands um, in Iceland, which open up sort of June time, depending on, on how sort of harsh the winter has been. And they're open just for a couple of months um, and accessible either by helicopter or super Jeep, which are the modified four wheel drive cars. And that's just sort of center south of, of Iceland. And then the other um, super Jeep day we have there is Thorsmork. But the good thing about Thorsmork is it's open all year round. Um, and this was an area that was created from um, the eruption in 2011. And because that eruption was under a glacier, um, they it sort of bounded through and made this sort of valley um, with the glacier rivers, secret canyons and, and waterfalls and things. So it's a really beautiful day for, for driving in the four wheel car or for, for hiking as well. And that's just sort of below um, the highlands of Iceland. Amazing waterfalls, We've got over 10,000 Iceland, so never a problem of not seeing one. This one is Skogafoss on the South Shore, Gulfoss on the Golden Circle, and Selangefoss again on, on the South Shore, just there. This is the West Fjords, this is Kirkafjord. So we tend to send people to the West Fjords if we've got a bit more time. Um, for clients coming to Iceland um, or returning clients. If they, they've been before and seen the main sort of sites in the South Shore, um, then we'll look at new areas for when they return, the West Fjords and up in the North as well. So that's just there on the West. So the main sort of reason for this uh, presentation today is about the current eruption. So I spoke with a geologist today just to get some really sort of interesting facts to put it all in um, to perspective, because this is a really exciting time in, in Iceland. The um, eruption is happening, like I said, in the Reykjanes Peninsula, and there's currently six fissures, six openings of, of the, uh, the volcano. There was previously eight, um, but one stopped and, and one's got blocked. So the eruption is not that dangerous in, in terms of sort of eruptions. Um, the locals are taking a hike, they're sort of parking up and it's about um, a one hour hike to sort of get close to it. Or um, one of the boys in the office yesterday, um, they took the, the fat bikes, the big mountain bikes and, and biked over there, which is sort of 30, 40 minute bike ride over the lava fields. Um, the Reykjanes Peninsula area itself has not been active for 800 years um, in terms of volcanoes and things. And the last one that they did have was the one that actually created the Blue Lagoon. Um, so the volcanic um, activity in this area could last up to now 300 years, spiking other um, volcanoes and eruptions and things because of the way that they're all connected. So this eruption, the, the magma chamber actually goes down through to the center of the earth. Um, and they're not going acrosswards. And they're saying it goes down 17 kilometers to hit the, the middle of the earth. And that's where the lava comes from. 
So until there's a big earthquake to sort of block this chamber, the, the eruption will still keep happening. Um, it's a slow eruption, so it, it, the, the lava is not coming out fast, but it's coming out constantly. So um, that's why you see those amazing images where you see it sort of shooting up. Um, like I said, there's no immediate danger, but it just depends then how long it goes on for, because there's only so much sort of lava that the, the, the surface can take before then it starts to spread a bit further. Um, but what we're sort of currently doing um, for clients that we're sort of quoting now for, for arrival in May and early June is we've always done a Reykjanes Peninsula sightseeing, but obviously now it just makes it a bit more um, interesting. So we're adding in um, a chance to, to see this eruption either by helicopter, the companies are doing sort of 45 minute um, flyovers or, or the hike. Um, the guides are saying that they won't get down and close, they will stay up and look at it from below because of, of the gases in, in an eruption um, and they don't want people to get too close because some of them obviously are sort of poisonous. Um, so that's just sort of a few facts and overviews on the eruption. I just want to show you some of the images of um, one of the photographers that we actually work with in Iceland. Um, he's a professional photographer who does um, tours so if clients are ever into photography and, and want to be specially guided by a photographer then then Thor is our man. Now this one was taken just two days ago. Um, obviously we're lucky enough that the, the Northern Lights is still happening in Iceland so this is just an amazing wow moment to get the uh, the lava and, and the colours and then the Northern Lights to come out. He was just in his element. Um, this is a drone sort of footage from above to, to show the sort of area and, and the cracks and how it's sort of splitting and um, traveling. And you can even see, I don't know if you can see my mouse, the little people all around the edges, um, all taking a walk and a hike to go and, and, and witness this. Um, this is a drone sort of picture taken a bit closer. There has been many drone fatalities in this eruption. Um, and then a couple more again, you can see how close, this is what we're sort of talking about to get people higher up instead of low down next to the lava because of, because of the gases um, when we do take them to see it. So that's just a few sort of images and an overview. And we hope, you know, it continues for a little longer so it can be a selling point for, for you to, to promote to your clients and things. But as I said, I'll send you that link to the um, live footage and, um, I'll also send the link to the, um, the COVID um, webpage in Iceland. So what we're noticing from the inquiries that we're getting, because obviously now Iceland is open, um, uh, people wanting, um, you know, people are still cautious about traveling and, and not wanting to be in groups and crowded places. So people are more inquiring now about private houses. So I just wanted to give you a sort of quick overview of some of the ones that we have um, on offer. Um, as you can see, they're all beautiful, well-appointed lodges. We can get them fully staffed um, and catered for private chefs in there. Most of them have hot tubs and, and undisturbed sort of views. And we've got most of them located in all the sort of prime areas where we're doing our, our sightseeing. Anything from sort of three, four bedrooms all the way up to um, eight bedrooms. We've got the lake house, which is one I was just working on today, actually. Um, Fish Creek, really beautiful panoramic views and settings. And this is one we probably work with the most. It, it's the least um, fancy one, but it, it's more people when they stay at whole, a house are more, it's a home away from home. Beautiful, well-serviced staff, um, just on uh, the edge of Thorsmork, which is what all this sort of backdrop is of, of that house. Um, it's a great one because it's four, four bedrooms, four bathrooms, everyone's got their own area. Um, and then this isn't a private house, but it's also a very good option. It, it's a newly opened pre-COVID pre hotel called um, the Torfus Retreat. And it's based, modelled on um, the old Icelandic turf houses. Um, so the ones in the picture there are the two bedroom ones, which have two bed bedrooms with a bathroom in the middle. Um, that bottom left picture is the sort of living area and there's a kitchenette and each of the two bedrooms have their own private hot pool, um, which is, I don't know if you can see my mouse, just this 
built from um, lava stones into the ground. And then you have one bedroom studio options, which are in blocks of three, and then they have um, their own pool between the three of them. So it's another nice sort of private option where people aren't walking through corridors and, um, and busy sort of hotels. And then just a sort of idea on all the activities we can offer coming up in the summer. Ice walk and snowmobiling, um, all year round activities, buggies, ATVs, horses. Um, and then mainly these are sort of specifically summer activities, puffin watching, fishing, uh, golfing because of the 24 hours of, of daylight. So there we go, just a, a very quick overview today. Just wanted to talk about the eruption and how exciting it is. Um, and I'll just give you now a quick sort of update on entry into Iceland. So we opened the borders about three weeks ago now. Um, they're open to everyone that's been vaccinated. Obviously someone asked a question earlier, there is a list of um, red countries um, and this is changing daily and it's all dependent on the, the infection numbers in each country. And if, the, um, if a country is on a red list then they have to go into sort of quarantine on arrival. Um, but you have to be fully vaccinated, a clear PCR test within 72 hours of arrival. And then when you arrive into um, Iceland, into Keflavik Airport, you take another PCR test, um, which is currently, the cost is currently covered by the Icelandic government, but obviously we know things change uh, regularly. Um, I guess it depends how many tourists come in to, to how long they can keep covering the costs. Um, but the results are given that day. And what we're sort of doing with clients on an arrival day is to recommend we keep that arrival day at leisure um, because they're saying, well, they are free to leave the airport and, and go to their hotel, but just to sort of avoid any crowded areas until they get the results of those PCR tests that they're taking on arrival. And then we're sort of free to, to do um, as we're used to doing and welcome them to people into Iceland. There we go. Any questions? Oh, thank you very much, Sarah. That was You're short, welcome. but full of little details. And uh, uh, Judy, you want to ask if uh, you you would share some of your pictures, a picture of the volcanoes and eruption? Yeah, I can. I won't share those ones. Um, Thor is very particular on on people using his images. Um, but the boys in the office have um, gone up, so I'll, I'll send some okay. across. Perfect. Um, to people. Well, as a, as a yeah. I don't know if you want maybe to finish while well, we finish to put back the eruption because some yeah. of our attendees came a little later and they might enjoy seeing what uh, you just mentioned, what's going on uh, as we speak in Iceland. I think that would be a nice and we and almost call it peaceful, well. huh? remember when we were looking at it. So any other question while uh, Sarah is going to set up? Uh, uh, I don't see any other question. Huh? So actually we're all good. And uh, we're gonna. Alors, where can they get the tests on arrival? Is asking Liz. It's in the airport. At the airport, so that's good. Uh -huh. I think Michelle, you said you were uh, hoping that the hotel will start providing the the tests for the way back. Huh? Uh, so I don't know if you have anything to add to that, Sarah. About we're working with um, the. Oh, it's just froze. Mm -hmm. There we go. And we're working with um, the hotels and the Icelandic government to sort of work out the best um, way for people to get their, their test before they head back home. Um, mm -hmm. But that's nothing for people to worry about. We'll take care of that. Yeah. All right. But as you said, uh, you really uh, sell that the eruption is definitely a selling point and that people, you will it's have a such a unique yeah. experience. Yeah, exactly. And very safe. And uh, so we're all good. Right, these are beautiful pictures to uh, add again. Any, anyone else has any question? If you don't, then uh, I see just one. But uh, Michael, I came in late. How far is a volcano uh, eruption from the city? Um, so it's in the, the Reykjanes Peninsula area. So it's about sort of 40 minute drive from the city. Um, but currently where it is, it, it's, it's currently safe. It just depends how much longer it goes on for um, because of the, the amount of lava, but currently, as you can see, that sort of overview, there's literally nothing around it. So um, currently all sort of villages, towns and, and cities are, are safe. Yeah. All right. So I think we can say goodbye 
Uh, Sarah, thank you very yes. much. You will be thank sending you. recording. You will be sending this uh, link uh, yes. for the eruption. And you said also reminding everyone the link that you have all the information for entering. Uh, uh, yeah. Right. I will send the uh, Icelandic COVID website link um, and it's just filled with lots of voilà. information and um, the lists are dated, updated with the, the red countries and things. So. Plus a few pictures that your team has taken from yes. the volcano for people who want to share. Huh? Yeah, so, they're taking some fun everyone. ones. <laughs> thank you very much, Sarah. I know you're busy these days and but yes. thank you for your time. It was lovely to have you with us and thank you very much everyone for joining us. We'll see. Yeah, just quickly, actually, sorry, Dominique. If anyone does have um, inquiries for the summer, um, I did mention to Dominique at the beginning, it is filling up now. So it's a case now of just sort of letting us know so we can get in quick. Um, but the hotels, yeah, are just. So Sarah will be sending the recording so you will have a email and you can answer back. If not, on Let's Connect 365, our marketing platform, you can always connect with Sarah if you have any question or if you want to know more or something. Yeah? Definitely. Thank you, Sarah, again. Thank you. Thank everyone. you so much. Oh, oh, Antonio. Thank you, Antonio. Buenas tardes, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. And we'll see you soon. Huh? Take Bye. care.